السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وحد وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My brothers and sisters Today is the 13th of Rabiul Awal The night of the 13th of Rabiul Awal 1442 years after the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam which coincides with the uh, 30th of October 2020. Uh, today inshallah as we have promised we are going to talk about the Al-Masih Dajjal or the, the deceptive one-eyed liar. Uh, what is the story with regards to him from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran al Karim talks about the Ashrat al-Sa'a or the signs of the Day of Judgment in general and also in some cases specific. In general talking about all of the signs. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Muhammad verse number 18 فَهَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا إِلَّا سَاعَةَ أَنْ تَأْتِيَهُمْ بَغْتَ Do they then wait, await other than the hour that it should come upon them بَغْتَ suddenly. فَقَدْ جَاءَ أَشْرَاتُهَا but some of the signs of the last hour has already happened, has already come. فَأَنَّ لَهُمْ إِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ ذِكْرَهُمْ And when it is on them, how can they benefit then by their reminder? Meaning how are they going to benefit from the Ashrat Isa'a when they are not ready, when they do not believe, when they do not do the righteous deeds? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also, هل ينظرون إن سورة الأنعام verse number one fifty eight هل ينظرون إلا أن تأتيهم الملائكة أو يأتي ربك أو يأتي بعض آيات ربك يوم يأتي بعض آيات ربك لا ينفع نفس إيمانها لا ينفع نفس إيمانها لم تكن آمنت من قبل أو كسبت في إيمانها خيرا كل كل انتظر Inna muntazirun. Allah Ta'ala says, Do they then await anything except that the angels should come to them or your Lord should come to them? Or that there come some of the signs of your Lord? Talking about the Ashrat Isa'a. The day that some of the signs of your Lord will come, no soul shall benefit from its faith as long as it had not believed before or had earned through in faith some good. Say, meaning Allah Ta'ala commands the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to tell the kuffar to the people who are heedless, wait indeed, we are also waiting. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also talks about the specific, the specific mm -hmm. signs of the Day of Judgment. For example, the, the splitting of the moon, for example, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, and for example, uh, sending Sayyidina Isa Alayhi Salam as a sign uh, for the Day of Judgment. But there are a lot of other signs which are not mentioned specifically in the Quran, but in general it is mentioned, and that is what we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions certain things in the Quran general and sends a Nabi al Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam and reveals to him another type of revelation which is known as the Sunnah, which is a revelation from Quran from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and gives us some other information of the general information that he has indicated in the Quran. So for example, from one of the greatest signs of the Day of Judgment is the emergence of the one-eyed liar, who is known as a Dajjal. Belief in Dajjal is a matter of unseen and to understand the Qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we actually go through the story of Dajjal, we will understand the power of Allah. That it has no, uh, the power of Allah has no extent, no limit. Second, once we verily when we have an information from the Quran and the Sunnah that is authentic of course, we have to understand that there is a lot of unexplained concepts, a lot of matters that we don't understand. That is mentioned in the story of Dajjal and other than the story of Dajjal, but specifically today we are talking about the story of the Dajjal. 
but we are believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the definition of the believer, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe in the unseen. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do everything. So when you mention something that doesn't make any sense to us, or we cannot apply our limited logic or limited understanding, we understand that this is truth and it is beyond our understanding, i.e. how it happens, we do not know, we just have to submit to it. We don't discuss these things too much, we are not supposed to. Why we are not supposed to? Because our Sahaba al Kiram took it as it is. They didn't ask so many questions, so many details, and they understood it as it is, and this is the simple way of understanding the story of the Dajjal and the story of all of the other things mentioned in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, there are major, some of the major signs of the, they are, they are divided into something called like importance or greatness. There is something called the major signs and the minor signs. Uh, there are a lot of major signs, but three of the major signs which comes one after another, we know for sure this is the chronological order. But some of the signs of the Day of Judgment, we are not exactly sure how it will come. But we know for sure that Mahdi, the coming of Mahdi, who is from the, the family of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam after Mahdi will come Dajjal in his la, in, he will be he will be there while Dajjal will come and cause havoc fitna and while Dajjal and Mahdi is there Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam will be sent as a cure for this disease the cure of the disease of Dajjal is Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam he will come down as we know from authentic report that he will assassinate or kill Dajjal by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dajjal is a man, he is a human being, he is not a jinn, he is a real man, he is not half this, half that, okay, he is not a mythical creature, uh, he is not a concept, because some people they think Dajjal is a concept, no it's not a concept, it's not the one eye which is drawn in the dollar bill, it is not TV, it is not Zionism, because a lot of people they come and they use their, you know, uh, uh, common sense to understand the story of Dajjal to basically bring no sense out of it, or basically bring kufur out of it, you know. So this is that's why we need to understand that Dajjal is none of none of these things. Uh, Dajjal is a human being, and he is a shaitan. He is a shaitan from the human being, meaning he turned away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is born like any of us from his parents. He is alive and he is existing in an island. He is chained. As we have the hadith, authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim on the authority of uh, uh, Tamim Adari radiallahu anhu. He is not Ibn Sayyad. Ibn Sayyad is one of the uh, personality that was, he was, uh, he was there in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and in the beginning time the Prophet Sallallahu uh, thought that he could be Dajjal. That's why some of the Sahaba they used to believe that he is Dajjal. But actually he, he was not Dajjal, he was a soothsayer, a fortune teller because when we look at all the stories and how the ulama interpreted it, we understand that he's one of those most likely soothsayer, liar and the soothsayer. He used to say different times different things is to do different strange things. All of these are reported in Bukhari and Muslim authentic. But the end of the story or the Khulasa al-Qal is Ibn Sayyad is not Dajjal. Is not the Dajjal who is going to emerge before the Day of Judgment and Allah knows best. We do not know when and where and to which family or which tribe Dajjal was born. We also do not know his original birth name. All what he is being refer to, describe to us from the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu as we will see with different words Ad-Dajjal Ad-Dajjal, the liar um, His fitna is one of the greatest fitna of all time all the messengers and the prophets warned against him including our Prophet Sallallahu and he was given some unique information about Dajjal and some in, the most information was given to him other than any other prophets and messengers there will be the Prophet ﷺ predicted, authentic narration, that there will be many Dajjals. And he said approximately 30 of them. Okay? 30 liars, they will come out and all of them will claim that they are messenger of Allah. But the Dajjal, we are talking about the sign of the Day of Judgment, this is the special one. 
the one who will emerge before the day of judgment whose story we are going to discuss he is basically a con artist a person who will bring deception and a person who will be given special capabilities by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that those special capabilities will be given to him to show that he is a liar because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives special capabilities not a special capability special uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who does all the miracles but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows a prophet to show a miracle to the people a prophet would never call the people to him they will call the people to Allah to show them the power of Allah but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed these special miracles in the time of Dajjal will show it to the people at Dajjal who is a liar he knows that he doesn't have the ability to do any of this okay but he will pretend that he is the one doing all these things and that's why he will tell people that he is Allah and he will tell people to worship him and this is a difference between the righteous prophets and the liars <clears throat> It is a great test for the believers uh, uh, and it will basically that test will separate the fitna of Dajjal will separate the kuffar, the evil people from the righteous. Those who will uh, pass the test, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, and he will come down as we will see from the story, he will anoint their face and he will give, tell them their ranks in the paradise. Like our Prophet Sallallahu told the ranks of the paradise, meaning like paradise is promised for such and such, such and such, you know, Ashri Mubashireen and the others that are mentioned from a Sahaba al kiram This is the same way Sayyidina Isa Alayhi who is a messenger of Allah, but he will not come of course as a messenger or a prophet, he will come as a follower of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he will be given that special knowledge that such and such and such and such people will be the people of paradise and he will tell their ranks in the paradise on that day. <clears throat> um, we need to understand that there are certain groups of deviant uh, sects they ascribe them to Islam uh, they have rejected that there is there's, there's something called the Dajjal they do not accept any of the hadith although these are hadith are plethora a lot of hadith reported by many sahaba uh, in Bukhari and Muslim the most authentic books of the hadith but yet some of these deviant sects they deny that there is will be a sign uh, 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 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send before the day of judgment which is the emergence of Dajjal that's why the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a Ulama they have explained this matter very clearly uh, when they discuss the concept of the Aqeedah or they write the Risala or they wrote the Risala with regards to the Aqeedah or the belief of the Muslims Dajjal is mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it's these description Al-Masihu Dajjal Al-Masihu Dajjal Masih they translate as Messiah However, the correct translation, inshallah, will, we will understand when we know what the definition of Masih. Al-Masih, Ad-Dajjal, meaning the liar, the Masih, who is the liar. Also, the Prophet Wasallam called him Masih al-Dalala, the Masih who is misguided, or misguided, the, the Masih of misguidance. Al-A'war Ad-Dajjal, the one-eyed liar. Al-A'war al the one-eyed liar. So the, what is the meaning of Dajjal? Is it his name? It is not his name. It is a description. Dajjal comes from the word Dajjal. Dajjal means to cover. Taghtiya. Cover, but here covering for, the, uh, for deception. To deceive. So this is the meaning of a Dajjal. The one who is basically deceptive. Okay. He is covering the truth with the falsehood. And the word Al-Masih, why is it called Al-Masih? The ulama, they said most likely, either from the word Mamsuh, because he's Mamsuh Al-Ain, Ain, because he's one of his eyes, the right eye, is defective. Or maybe he's called Dajjal because he will uh, 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 travel around the, the earth. He will travel around the earth and he will reach everywhere except four places, as we will see, inshallah, from the authentic hadith Allahu alam but al masih al dajjal is basically means the uh, the person the liar who has a deceptive eye or the, the liar who is uh, uh, going to be everywhere and will be sent as a day of judgment it has nothing to do with the concept of al masiah because we know we have we call ibn maryam isa ibn maryam masih ibn maryam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him masih ibn maryam this is the messiah the real messiah uh, but as for this one, he is a liar, a con artist. Uh, 
The purpose of learning, my brothers and sisters, of all of these, including the science of the Day of Judgment and, uh, uh, you know, uh, about the Jal, is so that we can become good Muslim. This is the purpose, not to collect just a bunch of information. As Allah Ta'ala says, La yanfa'u nafsan imanuha. These asharat is are the signs of the Day of Judgment will not benefit us until we believe in it properly or we have attained some goodness because of this belief. Because of our belief in Al-Islam, because of our belief that we are Muslims and so on and so forth. Then these matters will benefit us. That's why we have the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu in Sahih al-Bukhari. Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, Badiru bil a'mali sittan. Badiru bil a'mali sittan. He said to do good deeds before the six things happen. And he mentioned, Tulu'i shamsi min maghribiha, the rising of the sun from the west, awad dukhan, or, or the smoke, awad dajjal, or dajjal, awad dabba, or the beast, aw khasata, aw khas, um, aw khasata hadikum, aw amral amma, or the death of one of you, or a major turmoil. Before a major turmoil comes, badiru bil a'mal sittan. Do a lot of good deeds. This is the purpose of learning the uh, asharat is saha or the signs of the day of judgment. As with regards to his fitna, that his fitna is a very unique fitna. We have so many hadith. Uh, the hadith of Imran ibn Hussein in Sahih Muslim. He said, Sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma bayna khalqi adam ila qiyam sa'ati amrun akbaru min ad-dajjal. The Prophet Sassam said, between the creation of Adam until the Yawmul Qiyamah, until the Sa'a, there is nothing greater than the fitna of the Jal. Nothing greater than the fitna of the Jal. In the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, we have the hadith of Khudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu anhu. He said that the Dajjal was mentioned to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا أنا لا لا أنا لا فتنة بعضكم أخوف عندي من فتنة الدجال. He said, making an oath that uh, I fear the fitna that will happen between you, the Muslims, uh, maybe specifically as Sahaba al Karam. I fear that more sometimes than the fitna of Dajjal. ولا لا ولن ينج ولا ينجو أحد مما قبلها إلا نجا منها. And Whoever is saved from the fitna before it will be saved from the fitna of the jal. وَمَا سُنِيَعْتْ فِتْنَةٌ مُنْذُ كَانَتِ الدُّنْيَا صَغِيرَةٌ وَلَا كَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا تَتَّضِعُ لِفِتْنَةِ الدَّجَّالِ And uh, no fitna ever existed since the beginning of the world, whether big or small, except it will appear minor compared to the fitna of the jal. And this hadith is reported by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad and has been authenticated by Sheikh Shwaib al arnaut and also Sheikh Mukbil ibn Hadi al wadii rahimahumullah ta'ala jami'an. Uh, so, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described the fitna of the Dajjal, sometimes he would make it look very serious that this is the fitna and sometimes he would talk about other fitna and he would make them more serious than the fitna of the Dajjal. Sometimes we would make this high, sometimes we would make this low. As we will see from the other reports to, to keep this balance that don't just think about fitna of the Dajjal and forget that you also have your life, the fitna of the life and take it lightly. Because sometimes when you take the fitna lightly, maybe that will kill you. Mm -hmm. That will destroy you and you will not be even able to see the fitna of a Dajjal. So that's why he always kept this balance. Also, we have the hadith of Asma bin Tabi Bakr and Sayyid Bukhari that she said that the Prophet Sassam said it has been revealed to me that the people will be put to trial in the grave like the fitna of the child. So the Prophet Sassam, uh, you know, uh, compared the fitna of the grave, which is definitely a severe fitna, a severe trial, compared this with the fitna of a Dajjal. So what are the ways to protect ourselves to learn the religion, to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sassam? To learn who the Jal is. To learn who the Jal is. Because once we believe in the Sunnah, the Quran and the Sunnah, and we take the Prophet's words very seriously, the Jal will come, you will not, you will be able to look at him and you will know this is the Jal. He doesn't have to show any identity card to you. And the identity cards are there. We will come inshallah to that. Also, to the Prophet has mentioned that the one who recites Surati, the first ten verses of Surati Kaf, and this hadith is reported by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad and Imam uh, Ibn Hibban in his Sahih, and authenticated by Sheikh 
uh, Shu'ayb al-Arnaut and Sheikh Muhammad Nasiruddin al-Albani and others, the first ten verses of Surah Al-Kahf and the last ten verses of Surah Al-Kahf, the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who recites this, he will be protected from the fitna of Dajjal. And also we know that the Prophet ﷺ used to command, and the hadith in Sahih Muslim, on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, that the one who is in the tashahud, the Prophet ﷺ told him to seek refuge from four things. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhabi jahannam, from the, fit, the, the punishment of the uh, Jahannam, the hellfire, or min adab al qabr, from the punishment of the grave, or min fitnatil mahya wal mamat, and from the trial, trials of the tri- and the tribulations of the life and death, or min sharri fitnatil masih al dajjal, and from the evil of the fitna of the al masih al dajjal, the deceptive one eyed liar. Uh, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a very beautiful narration, Surah Abi Dawood, on the authority of Imran ibn Hussein, he said, the one who hears about Dajjal, the one who hears about Dajjal, let him go far away from him. Let him go far away from him. For wallahi, the Prophet ﷺ took an oath by Allah. For wallahi, inna rajula la yatihi wa huwa yahsibu annahu mu'min. Because he will come to him and he will think he's a believer. This man who will say, oh, I'm going to face Dajjal. He will go to the Dajjal, he will think that he is one of the best believers, and he will end up following him, because of the shubuhat, the doubts with which he has been sent. So when he will go to Dajjal and he will see the things, strange things, he will start following, falling into the trap of Dajjal. The Prophet said, run away from them. That's why Imam Ibn al-Batta, in his book, the great book, Ibanat al-Kubra, after he mentioned this hadith of uh, uh, Imran ibn Hussein, which is reported by Imam Abu Dawood, he said, هَذَا قَوْلُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. This is the words of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَهُوَ الصَّادِقُ الْمَسْتُوكَ And he is the truthful and the one whom Allah has attested to his truthfulness. Then he says, فَاللَّهِ اللَّهِ مَعْشَرَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مَعْشَرَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He said, O oh, the assembly of Muslims, I remind you of Allah, I remind you of Allah. Then he said that do not think so big of yourself that you have great iman and don't have so much, uh, 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 you know, good thought about yourself that you think that you would be able to attend the gatherings of the people of the Ahwa, the people who follow their desires. Then he said, I saw some people, this is Ibn Batta, he said, I saw some people who used to curse the people of the Bida, who used to insult the people of the Bida, and then they started saying, I will sit with their gathering because I can overcome him, I will debate with him, I will make him turn away from his madhab. And they sat in the gatherings of the people of the Bida, hating them, hating to sit there. But then they continued to socialize with them until the makar or the deception was hidden from them, and the kufr was hidden from them, and they started following the people of the bidah. And he said, in his advice to the Muslims, he said, some of these people of the Ahwa, their disease is worse than the disease of Jarab. Worse, of the, worse, uh, worse than the disease, of a kind of a very bad skin disease called Al Jarab. And he said, their words are more burning. It will burn your heart worse than the flame. And their fitna is greater than the fitna of Dajjal. This statement is not exceeding any limit. Because this is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ told the Sahaba al karam That I fear fitna amongst you. Sometimes we take the dunya so lightly. We think we fear Dajjal, but then we do not fear the sins that we commit. And we do not fear our association with the people of the disbelievers or the people or th- those who have diseases in their heart and they gradually start melting our heart and making us weaker and weaker and weaker so we started from there thinking we are going to call them to Islam we ended up being even to the lowest of the low there are people it has happened to them so we have to be very careful and this is a lesson that we learn from the story of the Dajjal it is not a concept it is a very practical lesson that we have to apply in our lifetime and also the Prophet also mentioned that there will be other Dajjals who will come uh, before the Day of Judgment, uh, the, the, uh, uh, close to 30 Dajjal, and this hadith is reported by Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullahu ta'ala. <coughs> His description. The Prophet described 
uh, very clearly that all the prophets and messengers warned against the Jal to the to their people, including Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, whose when he came exactly we have no idea. So many years ago, he warned his people of the Jal. But the Prophet said, I have been given something unique that has not been given to any other Prophet. That I have been given the knowledge that he is one-eyed. He is one-eyed. And he mentioned that the eye that he has problem is the right eye. And he described that it is like a protruding grape. It's like broken eye. It doesn't work. Protruding. It looks like a protruding grape. Another narration in Sahih Muslim, he said it is covered by a thick skin. And all of this is authentic narration. And he said between his two eyes is written Kafir. And then the Prophet ﷺ spelled Ka-Fa-Ra. And then he mentioned all the believers will be able to see it. And no disbelievers will be able to see that. So what will help us to recognize that Jal is our faith. We hate the Kufr, we hate the Bid'ah. We love the Sunnah, we love the Tawheed. This is what will make us recognize when there is a problem, we'll be able to smell it. Sometimes people go through fitna and they have no, no problem and they think it's absolutely fine. And this is what will happen to many people when they will see the Jal. They will see him in front of them, they will not be able to recognize the fitna of a Dajjal. The Prophet also mentioned in a, that he was shown in a dream that Dajjal is a uh, very uh, big man, red, reddish in color, curly hair. He has curly hair and of course his, one of his eyes is uh, 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 bad. Now there are narrations also which says his left eye is the one which is bad. But the ulama they have reconciled, when they brought all of the narration they said the correct narration is the one which says the right eye not the left eye. You will find the narration of the left eye, Hudayf ibn al-Yaman's hadith in Sahih Muslim. But the narration is not, meaning that wording is not authentic. <clears throat> so what is correct is that his eye, right eye is broken. And the Prophet ﷺ compared him with a man called Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan. Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan. Who is this man, Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan? There is a narration in Mustadim Ahmed and also Mustad al which says that Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan was one of the Sahabi. And the narration says, he said, O Prophet of Allah, uh, do you compare me with him? You know, I'm, I'm being hard because you're comparing me with Dajjal. So the Prophet said, no, you are a man who is a Muslim and he is a Kafir, but you look like him. However, the narration, as Imam al-Albani and others, Imam ibn Hajar mentioned, there is a reporter called al-Mas'udi, Mas'udi, and he قَدْ يَخْتَلَطَ meaning like he اختلطو, he used to mix up narrations. So because of this presence of this narrator, the narration is da'if. So who was actually Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan? Uh, we do not have any authentic report, but of course the Prophet knew him. Maybe he was a Kafir, maybe he was a Muslim. If he was a Muslim, he was a Sahabi. If he was a Kafir, he was a Kafir. He could be a man of Jahiliyyah. He died before Islam. The Prophet knew him and he saw Dajjal in the dream. So he could relate. And he said, the one who is mostly he uh, uh, you know, resembles is Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan. But exactly who this is? Allahu Ta'ala A'la wa A'lam. <clears throat> um, then remember the Prophet said what when you hear the Jal you go as far as away from him as far as away from him another narration in Umm Sharik's narration in Sahih, Mus Sahih al-Bukhari the narration says the believers they will run to the mountains okay and they ask at that time how many where will be the Arabs they will say the Arabs will be very few in number but the real believers they will run to the mountain away from the fitna of a Dajjal. Uh, and this is because he will come with shubuhat, doubts. And this is one of the reasons Imam Ibn Battal, what did he say? He said, be aware of sitting in the gatherings of the people of the Ahwa. If we go to the books of the, the ulama, like for example, Muqaddimati Imam Muslim, rahimahullah ta'ala, and we see that the ulama of the Halus Sunnah, the ulama of the Hadith, they used to literally follow up with their students. And if they would see their students sit in such and such gathering, they would warn them. They said, I saw you going to that gathering. 
This is something that is being forgotten by the people because everybody thinks that if he reads one or two hadith, he has, mashallah, all the protection of the world. <coughs> we should not underestimate, but we also should not <coughs> overestimate. And this is the balance the sunnah creates. That's why we will see one of the hadith the sahabas said, the Prophet has mentioned Dajjal and sometimes he would make his fitna like high and sometimes he would make his fitna like low. Why? To give them the balance. So don't always think fitna of Dajjal, fitna of Dajjal, fitna of Dajjal, fitna of Dajjal, then forget about the, the fitna that you're going through. Hmm? So Shaitan will trick you to think about the fitna of Dajjal and you will fall into the fitna of your life as, uh, you know, as you're going through your, uh, the matters of the life. At the same time, uh, uh, if we do not benefit from the fitna of Dajjal, then we will not be able to understand the difference between the kufur and the shirk. And that's another uh, mistake that we might fall into. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, uh, mentioned him in such a manner to create a balance in the heart of a sahabat al-kiram. But the deception that he will come with is, one of the deception that he will come with, and the hadith in Sahih Muslim, on the authority of Khudayf ibn al-Yaman, he said that, the Prophet said, I know what the Dajjal will have with him. He will have two flowing rivers. One that appears to the eye to be clear water. And one that appears to be, appears to be flaming fire. Okay? If anyone sees that, let him go to the river which he thinks is fire and close his eyes and lower his head and drink from it for it is cool water. This is how it came. Now, you know, whether this is a real uh, uh, river, or we don't want to go there. This is exactly what the Prophet said. We keep it exactly as it is. As it is. He will come with these strange shubuhat, strange things that the people will see with him. And the Prophet attested to that. <clears throat> so it is not a dream. It is not a concept. It is in reality will be there. How it is, only Allah knows best. Another hadith of Mughira ibn Shubha radiallahu anhu, he was that young Sahabi and that shows that they were so concerned about their faith. He would go and constantly ask the Prophet Sallallahu about the Jal. Because he was so afraid he'll fall into it. Okay? He's not just trying to collect information. Huh? When he was he born? Uh, this is what most of the people are worried about or want to know. That's I want to know more. I want to know more. No. Their main concern was how am I going to protect myself from him. So when the, he was so worried, the Prophet said, Ya Bunai, O oh my son, Oma yunsibuka minhu. Why are you worried about him? Innahu lai yadurraka. Because he will not be able to harm you. So the Prophet gave him the glad tidings that if in his lifetime, Mughir ibn Shu'bah, the Dajjal comes, the Dajjal will not be able to harm him. This is a great certificate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, the Prophet doesn't know that. It's a matter of unseen, unless Allah has given him that knowledge. So then, Mughira so is told the Prophet why. He said, O Prophet of Allah, إِنَّهُمْ يَزْعُمُونَ أَنَّ مَعَهُ أَنْهَارُ الْمَاءِ وَالْجِبَالِ الْخُبْزِ Because the people, they say that he will have a river or a, a stream of water and a mountain of bread. So the Prophet said, "Who ahwanu ala Allahi min dalik?" The Prophet told him, "Well, with all of these miracles, he is not worth it to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He is even in more in, as you think it is significant. So he is insignificant in the eyes of Allah with all of this. No value in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Power, eminence. He is a billionaire. He has this and he has that. These are all deception." All deception. People start following these people. How many people they do not know about the Sahaba, but they know about the movie actors and the stars, and they follow exactly what they are doing, how they are putting their makeup, how they are putting their hairstyle, what kind of dress they wear, what kind of car they drive. This is all they memorize. But if you ask them who is Abu Bakr Siddiq, they don't know. Who is Abdul Rahman Ibn Auf, they do not know. Deception. This is because we do not understand the concept of Dajjal. We do not benefit from the story of the Dajjal. Once we understand it, inshallah, we will not fall into this kind of deception. So, the Prophet said, okay, well, another narration of Mughir ibn Shawbah in Sahih Muslim, he said, he will have, people say he will have mountain of bread and mutton. Okay? Jibalu min al khubzi wa lahmin wa nahrum mimma. And he will have a 
a, he will have a mountain of bread and laham mutton and he will have a spring of water basically he will have the source of enjoyment food everything and we will see more things what Allah will uh, uh, show to the people in his presence and that's why the people of the dunya those who love the dunya these are the people will end up following uh, the people of the deception they will be the the first prey to the fitna of Adachar <coughs> Another narration of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu in the Sahih al-Bukhari, he said that the Prophet said, Shall I not tell you about an indication of the Dajjal which no Prophet told his nation? The Dajjal is one eyed and will bring with him what resembles hell and paradise. And what he calls paradise is basically the hellfire. And what he and so I warn you against him as Nuh warned against his nation against him. Uh, and then we have the very beautiful hadith, very long hadith of Al-Nawas ibn Sam'an radiallahu anhu in Sahih Muslim a very long hadith this hadith some of the people of our time they have said um, uh, that uh, the hadith has some nakara some uh, dis words which could be disputed but as far as we know Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen the scholars of the past and majority of the scholars they have accepted this narration and they have accepted the wording of this narration so inshallah the narration is authentic and the words do not have nakara or the words do not have any problem inshallah ta'ala and nawas ibn sam'an he said qala dhakara rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa dajjal dhata ghadatin one morning the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned dajjal fa khaffada fihi wa raffa'a and he sometimes made his uh, uh, matter insignificant and his ma ma he ma sometimes made his matter very significant. Hatta dhananna hu fi ta'ifatin nakhal Until we started thinking that he is there behind the he is there behind the date palm tree. So Sahabat al-Kiram they never understood a Dajjal as a concept. They understood that he is a creation. He is a human being. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum wa ardahum and they say he said that in the evening when we went to him he saw the sign of uh, uh, fear in our face so the prophet asked them about that they said oh prophet of allah you talked about dajjal and such and such you made significant sometimes you made his matter significant sometimes insignificant until we started thinking he's hiding in the date palm grove the prophet said something other than dajjal made me worry about you he said, if he emerges while I am with you, I will defend you against him. But if he emerges when I die, then every one of you will be his own defender. Allah is the one who will take care. Allah is the Khalifa. He mentions here, Allah is the Khalifa of every Muslim in my absence. So he has put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Khalifa. As when we go out for travel, we say, uh, Allah, you are the Khalifa too. You are the Khalifa for our Ahl, for our family. A protector, a guardian, the one who takes care for our family. This is how the Prophet left us uh, and he, men, he, he put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Khalifa for us. To protect us, to take care of us when the fitna of Dajjal comes. As long as we follow the deen of Allah properly. And then the Prophet said, A Dajjal will be young man with very curly hair with one eye protruding. Uh, I matched up his look of, to that of Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan, as we mentioned before also. He who amongst you survives to see him should recite over him the opening verses of Surat Al-Kahf. And here he doesn't mention how many, uh, ten, uh, the Hadith Abu Darda. He will emerge on the way between Asham and Iraq and will spread mischief right and left. O slaves of Allah, fathbutu. Ya ibad Allah, fathbutu. O the slaves of Allah, be firm. Be firm. We asked, O Messenger of Allah, how long will you stay on the earth? He said, for 40 days. Arba'una sabahan. 40 days. One day will be, like a, will be like a year. One day will be like a month. And one day will be like a, um, a week. And the rest of the days will be like your days. How come Aqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? We say, O Messenger of Allah, will one day salat suffice for the salat that day which will be equal to one year? Thereupon he said, No, 
but you must make an estimate of the regular time and then offer the salat accordingly. So here comes the question is how that one day will become like a one year. Like one year means how six months will be morning and six months will be night. Is it how it is? Most likely. Does it mean that the earth will stop moving? How it will happen? We have no idea. We do not go there. We leave it in the matter of unseen. How will the people survive for six months in darkness? We leave it in the matters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah knows. He is the one who will give that night and day and he will give the ability for the people to survive. Okay? And the Sahaba al kiram as you can see at this point, they were worried about the Salat. And this is what we should worry about. Okay, instead of going into the details of how it will happen and this and that and so on and so forth, there is no answer for this. You have been given knowledge but very little. So we should be keeping ourselves in this circle of little knowledge and we should not try to oversmart it or try to explain these things away by unnecessary logic and unnecessary uh, devilish explanation. <coughs> um, then uh, we said, O Messenger of Allah, how fast will his traveling be on the earth? How fast will he move? Thereupon he said, like the cloud driven by the wind, he will come to the people and call them to his, to believe in him, and they will answer his call. He will then give command to the sky to rain upon the earth, and he will send his command to the earth, and it will grow vegetation. These are all deception. The rain and the vegetation happens by the permission of Allah. But those things will be shown to them as a test. And with all of this, the Prophet said, what? He is insignificant to Allah. He is, it is a significant test for us, but he is insignificant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is sent as a test for the mankind. Like the way Iblis is a jinn who is sent as a test until the day of judgment. Similarly, Dajjal is from the shaitan of the human being who will be sent as a test. Okay? And all of this is will happen like the way the Prophet mentions. Then in the evening, their pasturing animals will come to them with their humps very high and their others full of milk and their flanks stretched. Meaning, those who will obey Dajjal and follow Dajjal, they will be given a lot of wealth and a lot of goodness and a lot of satisfaction. This is deception upon deception. Okay, He will then come to another group of people and invite them, but they will refute his claim and he will leave them. And there would be drought for them, and nothing would be left standing of their properties, meaning they will be suffering. The believers will be suffering, those who will reject the child. He would then walk through the ruins of the land, and he will say to them, say to the ruin, bring forth your treasures. And the treasures will come out and follow him like the swarms of bees. He will then call a person brimming with youth, and strike him with the sword and cut him into two pieces and make his two pieces lie in a distance equal to that distance between an archer and his target. And then he will call the young man back to life and he will come forward, meaning he will come back to life after death. Laughing and his face will be gleaming out of joy and it will be at this very moment Allah will send Isa ibn Maryam who will descend at the white minaret in the eastern side of Damascus. This is the Sham, the holy land, the special land, the land full of Barakah. Eh? This is where Sayyidina Isa salam will come down. Wearing two garments, lightly dyed of color, and placing his hands on the wings of the two angels, when he will lower his head, there, will, there would fall drops of sweat from his head, and when he will raise it up and he raises his head, the drops like pearls will scatter from it. Okay? Uh, every disbeliever who will find his smell will die, and his smell will reach as far as he will be able to see. He will then search for the jal until he will catch up with the jal at the bay gate of a Lud uh, in Jerusalem and will kill him. And will kill him. Uh, then the people who were protected from Dajjal will come to Isa ibn Maryam and he will wipe their face, anoint their face and will inform them of their ranks in Jannah. And while he was doing that, Allah will reveal to Isa ibn Maryam with these words, I have brought forth from amongst my slaves such people against whom nobody will be able to fight 
So take these people safely to the Mount of Attur. So this is the coming of the Ya'juj and Ma'juj, the, which is known in English as Gog and Magog. And we're not going to go there because our focus today is to talk about the story of the one-eyed liar. Who will be the people who will follow the Jal? As we said, the people of the dunya. As you can see over here, people who love food, rank, uh, all of us we love food. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about the greedy people. Uh, wealth, and they're, they run behind the dunya forgetting about the, their relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the people who will just straight away fall for the jal. But we have the authentic narration in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet said, Hadith Anas ibn Malik, يَتْبَعُ الدَّجَّالُ مِنْ يَهُودِ أَصْبَحَانَ سَبَعُونَ أَلْفَ عَلَيْهِمُ الطَّيَالِسَةُ The Dajjal will be followed by 70,000 Jews of Asfahan. And Asfahan is a town in the modern Iran, the country Iran now, wearing the Persian shawls. Uh, there will be significant war between the Muslims and, and let's go a little bit uh, rewind, okay, go back before the Jal comes. There will be a lot of war, major wars between the Muslims, the believers and the Jews. There are narrations for that in Bukhari and Muslim. And also there will be the winning of the Jazirat al-Arab. The, and the hadith are all authentic. I don't want to go through the details now because we don't have that much time. The Prophet said you will fight the Persians. You will fight the Romans. You will fight the Jazirat al-Arab. And also the Muslims will conquer back Constantinople. Or Kustantaniya, which is Istanbul, nowadays known as Istanbul. So Istanbul is under the control of the Muslims now. So most likely what is clear to us that before the Day of Judgment, Kustantaniya will go back to in the hands of the Romans. Okay, and the Muslims, the righteous Muslims will win it back. Uh, 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 for, be, this is a legitimate war, of course, a legitimate jihad, not the chaotic things. Uh, and they will win back Kustantaniya. Once they will win the Kustantaniya or Constantinople, there will be a call, false call, that the Dajjal has appeared. And the narration says they will all leave. However, the Dajjal did not appear, but he appears at a certain place between an area, between Sham and Iraq. And, of course, he continues the fitna and all that. And, while the Muslims will be in that situation in war and preparing themselves to fight the Dajjal and other things, Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam will come down. And when Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam will come down, the Prophet said, the Adu of Allah, the enemy of Allah will melt. When he will see him, he will melt like the way the soul melts in the water. And the Prophet said, if they leave him, he will completely melt and he will be destroyed. But Prophet Isa will follow him and he will kill him and he will bring the spear, the spear which will have the blood of the Dajjal and he will show this to the Muslims as an evidence that the Dajjal is being assassinated by Sayyidina Isa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and these are all reported in authentic narration of the Prophet sallallahu in Bukhari and Muslim and other places. Now uh, we talk about the places that the Dajjal will be able to go. The Dajjal will be able to go everywhere except Makkah and al Madina and the other two places which is Masjid al-Aqsa and the Masjid of At-Tur which is the Sinai mountain. We have the Hadith in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Anas ibn Malik that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there will be no land which would not be covered by Dajjal but Makkah and Medina and there would be no passage out of the passages leading to them which should not, which should not be guarded by angels arranged in rows meaning Makkah and Medina all the passages which is leading to Makkah and Medina on that day which is in future, inshallah, will be all guarded by the angels and he will not be able to enter those places. And then Dajjal will appear in a barren land, a salty barren land outside the Medina. And at that time, Medina will rock and shake three times. That because of that shaking, all the munafiqun, all the hypocrites and the kuffar, they will be thrown out of Medina. This is a special miracle that will happen. Uh, and uh, one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, of course, with related to this, uh, 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 and most likely these are the people who will be added to the uh, the, uh, the soldier of Adajjal. We have the hadith of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu in Sahih 
al-Bukhari, the Prophet said, the terror of al-Masih al-Dajjal will not enter al Madina. And at that time, Madinah will have seven gates, and there will be two angels at each gate. These are all authentic reports, how the angels will protect, will they come in the angelic form, will they come in the human form, only Allah knows best. Whatever comes to us, the way it is, we keep it as it is. Alladina be following the command of Allah, Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaib those who believe in the matter of the unseen. We have this other very beautiful narration in Mustadim Ahmad, which has been authenticated by Imam Sheikh Mugbil Ibn Hadi Al-Wadi'i Rahimahullah Ta'ala uh, on the authority of Mujahid. Mujahid, he said that one of the men, Junada Ibn Abi Umayyah, was appointed to give them khutbah for six years. And at that time, a man from Al-Ansar, meaning a Sahabi, came to visit them. Now, who is this Ansari man? The report doesn't mention. But as the ulama of the hadith says, they said, uh, the jahalati ismi sahaba, the, the, uh, the not knowing the name of the sahaba in a narration, la yadur, it does not harm the narration. As long as the tabi'i mentions that a sahabi narrated to him, that's it. We do not have to know the name of the sahabi because all the sahaba are udul. All the sahaba are trustworthy. And the tabi'i, when he says, I heard this from a sahabi, this we have to believe, because they knew who the sahaba are, and they knew who were not a sahaba al kiram Ridwanullahi ajma'in. So when this man from the Ansar came, they said, we asked him, narrate to us something from the Prophet Sallallahu and do not narrate to us something that you heard from people. And they said, we were very specific to him about it. So this Ansari man, a sahabi, radiallahu anhu, he said, that one day the Messenger of Allah stood amongst us, uh, amongst us and said, I warn you of Al-Masih, and one of his eyes is defective. Okay? And then the Sahabi said, I think, or one of the reporters said, I think he said, the left eye. And we did mention that the narrations which mention left eye is not authentic, the narration which is right eye is the authentic. His right eye is defective. Mm. There will be a mountain of bread and water that will move with him. How? Do not ask. Because matter of unseen, Allah can do whatever He wish. His sign is that He will stay on the earth for 40 mornings, meaning 40 days. His kingdom will reach everywhere. He will not be able to go to four masjid. Kaaba, Masjid Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Masjid Al-Aqsa and At-Tur. Whatever His influence and power is, know that Allah is not one-eyed. So he's telling them that this person, think about the deception of this person, you know. This person will come and literally he will say, I'm God. He will say, I'm Allah. I am the Lord of the heavens and the earth. And when people love wealth, they are blind. They are going to believe in anything. And the example of this is plethora. Look at some of the religions today and what do they believe God as? Some of the people, while we are talking, and they are in India, okay, you can actually search them up, the Rat Temple, maybe a lot of you know. This temple, literally, the people, they worship rats. Millions of rats are there eating and drinking and they bring milk and food to them and once the rats eat them, they take the leftover back, leftover of the rats back home to benefit from it because the gods have touched it, so it has blessings. When people forget about the real religion, the fake religion can be anything, as horrible as you can think, and this is open-ended. So this is nothing. This is nothing. How the people will not see kafara? one-eyed, protruding, you know, because the love of the dunya, the love of wealth, and the things that we have seen what will follow him, will make them forget everything. And they will believe that he is Allah. Um, then the Prophet Sassam mentions also uh, about a martyr, one of the best of the martyrs. And this hadith is reported by Imam Muslim and Bukhari. Uh, on the authority of Husayd al-Khudri radiallahu anhu. 
basically we know that when Dajjal is will come, the Prophet in general told all of us to stay away. However, there will be some very righteous, knowledgeable people. These are the people who will confront him. Okay, that's why our ulama of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they always warn us, don't read this book. Don't read this book because this book has deviance. But do you know that he already read the book? He already read the book. So we would say, Shaykh, you tell me not to read the book. You yourself read the book. Why can't I read? If you can read, you're human. Why can't I read? It's because he's a scholar. He has all the tools. And he has to read this book. So that he knows what is the problem with this book. So he can tell you, don't read the book. But some people, they don't understand this. They make themselves equal to the scholar. They say, oh, he can do, I cannot do, I'll do. And then they do and they fall into it. So do not misunderstand. These are the people, the Sunni, absolute Sunni people on those days. And that shows that the Quran and Sunnah will be taught even in those days. Very few people will know, but they will know it. How people will learn away to the mountain, whereas a bunch of people will follow him, and bunch of people will, some of the very few people will run to the mountain. How will they run away? Do you think they will run away because, because he was telling them to kill, was, he was threatening to kill them? No, he was telling them, come, believe in me, I'm going to give you this and that. They will run away because they will recognize that he is a liar. How will they recognize that he is a liar? Just, just by looking at it, impossible. They will recognize that he is a Dajjal because they will learn the Kitab and Sunnah. So this man, whose story is mentioned, he is basically, I am going to summarize it, long story short, he will come and he will face Dajjal and he will say, you are the Dajjal who our Prophet has mentioned. So he said, Dajjal will say, if I kill this man, and I'll bring him back to life because Allah is the one who gives life and causes death and gives life. Would you believe in me? They said, no, we'll not believe in you. The believers will say, we'll not believe in you. So that man, that Dajjal will command his people to cut him with a saw. The narration says, the Sai Muslim, half. And they'll put, as you know the narration, that they'll put him far away, the two pieces, okay? And Dajjal will walk between the two pieces to show the people that this is not magic. This is real. Okay, and then he will say, "Come back to life." So he will join and come back to life. So they will ask. He will ask him, "Would you not believe? Because I give you back life. Allah is the one who gives back." He said, "No, I'm now more sure that you are the Dajjal, because this is what the Prophet told us." And then he will say, "Oh, people know that this is Dajjal, and he will not be able to do this to anybody else after this." So they will try to kill him, and the Prophet said, "Allah will turn from his neck uh, to, to from, from his uh, f f uh, fr basically his neck. This part will be turned into copper." So they will not be able to kill him. The narration says, the authentic narration says, he will take him with his leg and feet and he will throw him. So the people will think that he threw him in the hellfire, but he will be placed into the paradise. And he, the Prophet said, he will be the best of the martyrs in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, we are talking about an alim, Rabbani alim, who went and who disputed with Dajjal by the permission of the Prophet sallallahu is by the permission of the Prophet because he knows all of these narrations. If we know, he will know too. Radiallahu anhum wardahum. May Allah be pleased with him because he's one of the, inshallah, will be the best of the martyrs. One of the strangest narrations that is there, and with that we will finish, is the hadith in Sahih Muslim. On the authority of one of the men called Tamim al Dari, radiallahu anhu, his Sahabi, who was a Christian who accepted Islam and who mentioned this story to the Prophet. Very strange story. And this is the only story that clearly teaches us that Dajjal is alive. From the time of us, Prophet Sallallahu actually when he was, when, we do not know. But from that time, as far as we know, from this narration until the Day of Judgment, he is going to be there. What happened, the narration says, the, the Hadith in Sahih Muslim says that a group of people from the tribe of Lakham and Judam, they were traveling in the ocean and Tamim Adari was one of them and there was this storm and the, 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 the ship started drifting and they saw one of the islands in the Arabian Ocean. Which island it is? Only Allah knows. They said we took a side boat, you know those smaller boats in the ship that they have and we rowed into the island to see what is there and they found a beast. A beast, Al-Jassasa, 
a beast which is so has so much hair that the front cannot be distinguished from the back and spoke to them and told them to go I'm just summarizing it told them to go to one of the monasteries where there is a man who is being chained and he's waiting for you and just Sasa says he's waiting for you go and talk to him he wants to know about you Allah Allah we do not know how he knew and all these things why how that man who is chained know that these people are coming no idea Tamim Adari said we got afraid that this Jassasa is a jinn or a devil so they ran away from him and they went into that old building and they found a very strong muscular man being chained up young man chained up and they asked him who are you they said I will let you know who I am you will know but tell me who you are they said we are some Arabs and this has happened to us and we came to the island and you saw this animal and we were afraid and uh, then we came to you then this man asked uh, 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 this chained man asked them some certain questions about a certain well about the certain trees in a land and so on and so forth I don't want to go into too much details of that the narration is very beautiful I'm thinking of making a special class about this narration because this is a hadith which is all the ulama of the previous generations as we know they have accepted this with full acceptance except some of the contemporary ones they have questioned this hadith and that is one of the reasons I want to discuss this hadith in a separate class inshallah but let me talk to you what is important now this man then said after they answered him all the things that he was asking he said inform me about the unlettered prophet Nabil Ummi what has he done so we said he has come out of Makkah and settled in Yathrib, Medina. He said, do the Arabs fight against him? We said, yes. He said, how does he deal with them? We informed him that he has overcome those in his neighborhood and they, had, uh, they have submitted themselves before him. Thereupon he, thereupon he said to us, has it actually happened? We said, yes. Thereupon this man said, if it is so, that is better for them that they should show obedience to him. That's why the ulama they say, subhanallah, even Dajjal, the greatest fitna of this nation, of all the nations, from the time of the creation of Adam alayhi until the day of judgment, even his nasiha is follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Yes, when he will come, he will come with the fitna, but he advised the sahaba, it is better that if they follow him. Even Dajjal said, and when we have a certain matter of the Sunnah, we advise the people, some of the people get so angry. When we tell them about certain innovation that is being prevalent, not done by the Prophet ﷺ, they get so angry. Even the Dajjal said, follow Muhammad Sallallahu And that's what the ulama, they say. Even the Dajjal says, follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he said, I'm going to tell you about myself. I am Dajjal and would be soon permitted to get out and so I shall get out and travel in the land and I will not spare any town where I would not stay for 40 nights except Makkah and Medina as these two places are prohibited for me and I would not make any attempt to enter any of these two places an angel with a sword in his hand would confront me and would bar me bar my way and there would be angels to guard every passage leading to it then Allah's messenger sallam, striking the pulpit with the help of the end of his staff said this implies Taiba this implies Medina have I not told you an, you an account of the Jal like this the people said yes the Sahaba said yes and this account narrated by Tamim Ad-Dari was liked by me for it corrobor corroborates the account or it matches the account which I gave to you in regards to Dajjal at Medina and Makkah. Behold, Dajjal is in the Syrian sea or in the Yemeni sea. N nay, but he is on the contrary in the contrary in the east and he is in the east and he is in the east. And he pointed with his hand towards the east. Fatima bin Qais, the one Sahabi, and this is the only Sahabi who narrated this hadith. She said, I preserved it in my mind, meaning the narration of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This narration clearly mentions and the Prophet sallallahu approved this. 
The point is the Prophet heard this story from Tamim ad -Dari. Now somebody might say that well, though that man who is chained, maybe he's a liar. He's another Dajjal. He say yes, agree. But he spoke the truth. How do we know he spoke the truth? Because the Prophet attested it. He didn't say, well, this part is wrong, this part is correct. He said, this is all correct. And he, he gathered the people, as we know in this narration, in the masjid, he delayed the prayer, the night prayer, and he told them, wait after the prayer. And he told them, I heard this story. And he himself narrated this hadith, which he heard from Tamim ad -Dari. All the narrations that we hear, the Sahaba narrated from the Prophet ﷺ. This is one of those narrations where we hear the Prophet ﷺ narrating from a Sahabi, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum wardam. It's a very special hadith and it needs a special class to understand and to comprehend and also to talk about uh, the shubuhat or the doubts that some of the, uh, the noble people in our time, they are noble people, uh, but they have created this doubt with regards to this hadith. Alhamdulillah, this hadith is very, very authentic, insha'Allah ta'ala. As we can see that the story of the Masih al Dajjal is a very uh, uh, strange, uh, lot of strange, unexplained things. Where is this island? You know, now in the topographics and the maps and everything under satellite, everything is there. Where is this? Where is this island? Only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. If you dig the grave, would you be able to see the matters of unseen? It's a matter of unseen. So maybe the island is there, but we do not know where it is. And we don't see it. And the, similarly, the story of Yajuj and Majuj, same thing, they are imprisoned in a place. Where is it? This is just one man chained in an island. That is two whole nation of Yajuj and Majuj, and they are chained. Where is it? So these matters, as long as we want to be Sunni, a real Sunni, true Sunni, we just take it very simply. Look at the Sahaba. They didn't come with, oh, where is this, where is that, and all these things. They just said, okay, that's it. This is Elmul Ghaib. They took it. And they say, wa ta'ana. Their more concern was, how am I going to be a good believer? How am I going to preserve my deen? And this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded in the Quran about when he talked about the Asharati Sa'a. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us see the truth as the truth and the falsehood as the falsehood. Do not worry. If you believe in the Kitab and the Sunnah, we will be able to see him and we'll recognize him. A lot of children, let me finish with this small thing. A lot of children, they ask me, the Prophet Isa is going to come back. How would we know? When he comes, how would we know? I told them that very simple. Do you believe in Prophet Isa? They said, yes. I said, do you have any doubt about him? He said, no, we don't. So if you do not have any doubt about it, and you follow the religion, Prophet Isa will come, you will look at him, and Allah will make you recognize him. He doesn't have to show you any passport, any identity card. Your faith will make you recognize Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, like the way Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Umar ibn al-Khattab, they believed in Muhammad sallallahu They didn't see Angel Jibreel. Many of the Sahaba, they just saw the Prophet sallallahu they believed in him. They heard his words, they believed in him. Why and how? This is because when people are seeking the truth, they will be shown the truth as the truth and falsehood as the falsehood. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.